Hello, my name's Jorb. I Low Gear. Welcome to 2022's State of the Gear. <laughs> I'm going to call it that, even if it is dumb and cheesy. Happy New Year. This video is going to accomplish a few things. I'm going to go over uh, the state of the gear, <laughs> what I still have that you've seen, the stuff I've sold, anything that's new that you can expect to see content on, and all of that is so you guys know what to ask for videos on. Uh, because your comments really do help me decide what I'm going to work on next. Uh, and it'll be sort of a channel check-in with a slightly self-indulgent recap of the last year. I'll let you know specifically videos that are coming up next. But really the common thread with all these things is I just want to talk to you guys. Uh, you normally get like a few sentences at the beginning and the end of a video that isn't like specifically pertaining to the topic. And even if I have great interactions in the comments, and plenty of you have found me on Instagram, at Gear, which you should follow. <laughs> which Instagram's probably... For all intents and purposes, the best place to contact me. I see it the most. I'll probably respond to you the most. I'm getting quicker at looking at requests. So follow me on Instagram if you want to ask me questions. <laughs> but I feel like I don't often enough get a chance to just sit and talk to you guys about this whole gear on YouTube thing. So this is going to be that along with sort of a year-end checkpoint, okay? Cool. If you are subscribed, this video is for you. If you aren't, you should hurry up and click right now so that the video can be for you. <laughs> As recently as January of last year, when I said my subscribers, I was talking to less than 400 people. And just this week, I passed 7,000. And I'm extraordinarily proud of that. And that doesn't happen without those 7,000 people. You, 7,000 people. So sincerely, thank you for that and sticking around and <laughs> thinking I have something to say. That really does mean a lot. And also other creators in the synth community who have seen something in me and been willing to help. Uh, I crossed 1,000 subs in April, and that was right after my, my parody of Bad Gear. And that 1,000 subs happening then is the direct re is the direct result of a plug from Florian, from Bad Gear. Uh, it's still there on his Blofeld video. He opens the video with a clip from mine complimenting me and thanking me and telling people to subscribe. And that has netted me a lifetime increase of 550 subs. And most of them were immediately. <laughs> most of them were in that first month. Uh, it's still my second highest subs per video. A massive thank you to Florian and Bad Gear. I really owe him big time. I got help on Resident Screams from Noir. Noir et Blanc V. However you're supposed to pronounce that. I'll let Google Translate do it. Noir et Blanc V. <laughs> but he helped me when I know he was working on his Halloween special as well. So thank you, Noir. Bo Beats was kind enough to include me in the Synth Awards. Super grateful for that. Bo, you've been a wonderful source of advice. And everybody else, many other creators that I've spoken to or even just shared a few comments with. Uh, Josh is making music, Tefty and Memes, Jack Duxbury, Gabe Miller, Epoch Philosophy, my good buddy, Midlife Synthesist, who's really the one who inspired this video. Everybody, cheers to you all. YouTube's weird, lonely thing to devote time to and having other people who know what it's like to work really, really hard and then launch a video into the open arms of the void, having no idea if it's going to catch the algorithm or not. It's nice to have people to talk to who've been through that as well. So thanks to all of you. And I really kind of want to brag right now. I've been acknowledged by the king, by the OG. Nick Bat has seen my content <laughs> at the beginning of the Sonic State video for the Nymphes, and I cannot stop smiling about it. Uh, Nick Bat says, and There's a great video by a chap called Jorb on uh, YouTube who sort of shows the differences. And I'll never forget that. <laughs> I was stunned. I had to rewind. I couldn't. Disbelief. Total disbelief. So that to me is an actual measure of success. <laughs> Nick Bat has seen my content. I'm so proud. And thank you guys for that. That happens because of you guys. Anyway, that's the self-indulgent part. <laughs> it doesn't happen without strangers on the internet uh, thinking that my opinion is worth something. So thank you sincerely to you guys for being here, for being that for me. Cool. All right. No more sappy stuff, huh? <laughs> we want to know about the gear. <laughs> What's coming up for 2022? Uh, well, a good chunk of my gear landscape, which you can see often in my background, is the same as when I did a big video on all the gear I own and how much I paid. There are a few things I've sold. Uh, the Mofo's gone. The JX3P is gone. All of the Moog stuff, except for the Sub 37, <laughs> which is very funny, considering the only video it got on its own was about selling it, but I kept it around around his back line uh, through a buddy, and then that only happened once because there aren't any shows really going on right now. So it's back up on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Mostly it's trade bait, but anyway, most of the gear I have in that video, I still have. Uh, and I have a few new things that I haven't really shown off. I have a few examples of gear that was sent to me by very, very generous subscribers. Both were essentially just a cost of shipping, and I want to thank them specifically. So, Christina, thank you 
in Sonic, the ESQ1, which does not work yet. <laughs> I'm trying very, very diligently to get it working. Uh, here's some clips to the side of what will eventually be in a video when I do get it working, but I was really hoping it wasn't the keyboard controller chip. It might be, so I am trying to replace it. Uh, and also Colin, thank you for the TR8 and the model cycles. I, I recently took the cycles home to learn it a little bit better, and I've had the TR8 on the table when I'm trying to learn other gear just to have a quick drum machine super hands-on. Both are actually very fun to manipulate live, so they will make it into a video soon, I promise. Thank you very much for both of those, Colin. Anyway, other recent gear acquisitions you guys have seen me talk about the Nymphes a lot. I quite like it. I've been enjoying sound design on the Take 5 as well. I've been working on uh, some songs and some sounds for Buddy's new project that I'm very, very grateful to be a part of. Uh, I'm currently working on a Roland D50, which I got only a few days ago in Minneapolis. Needs new tack switches, which shouldn't be bad at all. That'll get its own video. Stereo doesn't quite work right, which could be easy or could be hard. Uh, but I'm very excited about a video on this one because I have a story that connects to uh, missing out on another D50 that I'm very, very excited to share, finally. I'm also lining up a trade for a JX8P, which is a JX8P that I used to own myself, <laughs> and which I sold just before I started really getting catching my stride with the whole YouTube thing. So I'm excited to have it back now that I'm better, really, with synthesizers and more comfortable demonstrating things. Uh, you may have noticed, here's another small thing. I have merch, but I don't plug it. I've never plugged it because I was just waiting for people to ask, and it didn't really happen. So I do have merch. I'm wearing one of the shirts now. This is one of the shirts. It's the synth demon image I made for Resident Screams Chapter 2. I also have ones that just say funky. Uh, I haven't plugged them directly because they're inspired by the SH-101 manual, and I haven't talked about it yet. Uh, but the link is in the description. I think there's two synth demon shirts and four and three or four color variants of Funky. Uh, you might have noticed I moved to one video a week instead of two. I am still unemployed, but I'm spending a lot of time traveling around the holidays to see family. I've had more than a handful of job interviews and late nights doing my resume, and I've been DJing as well. It takes a good chunk of a day to work out a four-hour set. I did record the majority of my uh, New Year's Eve set that I did, but I don't know that I'll put it on this channel because the last one kind of tanked, and the algorithm does punish you for bad videos, so I might make a second channel. Let me know if you care about the DJ content. I know it's totally different. Uh, as far as specific videos, gear videos, the good stuff that's inbound. <laughs> I posted a few polls, uh, which has been great. You guys are great on the polls and very, very good insight and feedback on those. But you guys probably know I've been working for a while on the Synthesis Guide to Guitar Pedals. That's something I really, really want to get right. It's something I know well that people utilize often that I don't think there's much specific content on, and I'm excited to be able, and I'm excited to be in a position where I think I can, I can really do that justice. There will be more uh, NPC key groups soon. I think the AX60 next, and then all the rolling stuff. So the Juno, the JX8P when it gets here, and the D50 once I get it working. Uh, there will be more episodes of Redirect Your Gas, which I really love that series. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to shoot pretty big, secure a sponsor for that one. Uh, so the outline for the next one is totally done. It's been done for a little while, but I'm really trying to get a company to sponsor that. I think I've got... Uh, I think I've got a good option. <laughs> um, I also have a big outline cooking for uh, deciding which of my vintage polysynths to keep around. And I only want to bring it down to one or maybe two. I pulled you guys on in the Juno one by a landslide. <laughs> but I'm also trying to secure I'm also trying to secure some uh, external support for that one. So <laughs> stay tuned. I'm trying to think of the right way to cover the SH-101. To just cover it is kind of boring. And I know a few other things people have asked about the Op-6. Whenever I feel inspired to learn FM is when you're going to learn about the Op6, because that's when I'm going to learn <laughs> about the Op6. I found Eurorack to be very creatively satisfying lately, uh, so that'll probably get some more coverage in specific modules. Get, we'll get a run through, but I'm, I want to talk about a few Eurorack modules at a time, and I'm trying to think of the right way to group them up, or, or you know, at least uh, a catchy enough idea that the video will be interesting to people who aren't looking for those specific modules. So that'll happen, but uh, I need to land on the right idea first. But there you go. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. One more thank you to anyone who supported me. Uh, the pat Well, the patch packs and the NPC expansions, I think, have garnered more than 2,000 downloads, and that's just since I moved where they were hosted in uh, June or July. So that's great. I'm very proud of that. Thank you guys for that. Uh, I'm going to immediately warm up my soldering iron and work on my D50. <laughs> I'm very proud to be here at all. My name's Jorb. I love gear. I'll see you soon. Good luck in the new year. So long.